Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma we are going to take some topics that comes up after delivery. This topic that are taking this money comes after delivery. It has nothing to do with pregnancy and the mother, but it has to do with the baby and the mother. So this morning we are going to discuss circumcision. We are going to, to discuss air piercing. And we are going to discuss importance of six weeks and family planning. This discussion, these topics, there are things that we dis usually mothers are concerned about immediately after their baby. When a woman has a male child, she's concerned about what is going to happen about circumcision. <coughs> usually is done for male children. Circumcision is done for only male children. And this circumcision is not done by everybody. There are some cultures that don't approve of circumcision. They don't do it. But in our culture, in Nigeria, we know that majority, they approve of circumcision. So when you have a male child, the child, it's circumcised. So when do you circumcise your child? If you have a male child, the male child is circumcised from eight days. From eight, for those who are Christians and read Bible, you also look at the children of Israel. God said they should circumcise their male children on the eighth day. And uh, the reason being that we are told that from eighth day, the um, clotting factor of the child is perfected at that time from that time. The factor in the body of the child is perfected from eighth day. So, that you also agree with me that God also knows mercy. So that's why he said from the eight, on the eighth day, the children of Israel should circumcise their child. But ours, from the eighth day, we can circumcise our male children. Male children. Mm -hmm. Emphasis on male children. Don't circumcise female children. If you circumcise female children, that is called mutilation. It is not good. We don't do it. We circumcise only male children. So what is circumcision? What do we do during circumcision? During circumcision, what we do is we remove the skin covering the tip of the gland penis of the newborn baby male child. That is what we do. The type we do is called the, the placebo type. We use plastic to cover the head of the gland penis, cut off excess skin, excess skin that is daily, and tie it off. This procedure that we do, it takes about 10 to 15 minutes from when we start. 10 to 15 minutes, and we are done. And when we finish, we ask you to sit and wait for about five minutes to check whether there is bleeding. So once there is no bleeding, we ask you to go home. Please, let me transfer. Some people are getting into, into our discussion. So five minutes after the procedure, we ask you to go home. And we tell you that every more, every day when you give, when you bath your baby, you should use a wet cutting wool, wet cutting wool to so clean the head of the glands. So that sloth, that white, white, um, white substance does not cut the head of the glands. No. Sometimes, when you give your child for circumcision, 
we say we can we should delay this circumcision reason why we delay circumcision or reason why we postpone circumcision reason why we postpone circumcision number one if the health of your baby if your baby have jaundice i said let's postpone it the jaundice is cleared Sometimes when there is abnormality on the gland fenis, maybe there's something we call hypostadias. The opening of the urethra on the gland fenis is under the glands. Then the circumcision will not be done. Your baby may be, will now be referred to a urologist who will examine your baby and then when so, let's meet ourselves we are getting into the discussion then when you go home we will tell you that within seven to ten days plastic output will fall off and the excess the remaining skin so within that seven days, if it does not fall off, then you must come back to the hospital. Now, when to the hospital, what should you notice that will make you to return to the hospital? When your baby has trouble passing urine, you should return to the hospital. When your baby has fever after the circumcision, please return to the hospital. When there is foul smelling discharge or covering on the head of the penis, please return to the hospital. When this, there is excess swelling, after circumcision, there will be a, a little swelling. Or when it is more, then return to the hospital. Or when you notice that in the diaper of your baby, there is bleeding, there is blood and it's plenty, please return to the hospital. And then when you notice that the plastic bell has stayed more than 10 days, more than 10 days, then you should return to the hospital so that we can re remove the plastic bell by ourselves. That is about circumcision. We are going to discuss about air testing. Are we still hearing me? Are we listening? Are we hearing me? Am I communicating? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma no. yes, yes. ma okay, thank you. About air piercing. Air piercing, you know, we have discussed about the male child. Now we are discussing about the female child. When you have a daughter, usually we will ask you if you want your daughter's air to be pierced. And then we give you a consent form, you will sign. We also give you consent form in circumcising your baby because if you don't give approval, we cannot circumcise your child. Of course, you have to bring your child to the hospital before we can do the circumcision. But now, to yes, your baby girl's heir, you also have to give us approval. So that's why we will give you a consent form to sign. Usually you can bring your baby, your baby girl to the hospital anytime for air piercing. But usually most mothers, they do it before they go home. Before they go home, it may be on the day they are going home, they will ask the nurse that, please, I want my baby's air to be uh, pierced. And then we will pierce the baby's air. And then usually it is done on the lower lobe at the center of each of the air. At the center of the lower lobe of each air, sensation is reduced and the baby may not be too much. We'll clean it with spirit and then put an air ring into it and clip it at the back. And then we ask the mother to clean it with spirit. And that will be all. Now we also discuss that's about the air piercing. It's a simple procedure. 
and your baby go home, will go home. Now we are going to talk about importance of six weeks. Importance of six weeks. Six weeks delivery. Your doctor will ask you to, to visit the hospital for review. Six weeks is important for both the mother and the baby. It is only these six weeks that the doctor will evaluate how the mother has recovered from the trauma of delivery. She wa wants to see the heal whether healing has been established. Healing has occurred in where there should be healing. And then whether you have established lactation. One of the things that your doctor will want to check when you come for six weeks, your doctor will want to know how you are breastfeeding, whether milk is coming properly. Your doctor will want to check your womb, whether your womb has gone back into the pelvic properly and has reduced. Because when you breastfeed very well, your womb will contract very well. And as it's contracting, it will force out out and we make your uterus to go back to the normal state. And then your doctor will also check whether your we ask you if your if you have a, if you have a seotomy, if it has healed, and you will check your PCV, that's your blood level, whether you have a good blood level. If you don't have good blood level, it may affect your lactation. And any every other thing in your body you may be weak, you may be you may feel sick, and then he can give you other medical you will need to take care of all those. And then you also visit your um, pediatrician. Your pediatrician will check your baby, see the height of your baby, whether your baby is growing well. We we'll see whether your baby has gained weight, and if you have any pro any other. Um, complaints that you want to tell your pediatrician six weeks is the time to come and discuss your with your pediatrician and if there's any question you want to ask either the doctor or the nurse or your pediatrician and to come and ask them now we are going to go to discuss family planning very very essential topic family planning. Most women from the labor room, that's where they will be asking you, not, uh, when can I have a conversation? Well, I mean, when can I do family planning? We'll just tell them to hold on until earliest six weeks. Now, when we talk family planning, what do we mean by family planning? Family planning is when couple make decision about the number of children they want to have and when they want to have it. Family planning is when couple decide when to have children and the number of children to have. When couple do family planning, such couple you will see them Suddenly getting pregnant when they are not ready. We have seen women three months after delivery, they are pregnant. Some even after cesarean section. The period will not come. And suddenly they will discover that they are pregnant. So usually family planning is a discussion we always have before you leave the hospital. So how one understand what family planning is? We want to look at the types of family planning. Types of family planning. We have the contrast. We have the hormonal family planning. We have barrier method of family planning. Now, Hello, into our discussion. Please let's mute those who are not have not muted themselves. Please let them mute.
family planning like this when couple decide when to be to have children and the number of children to have now the types of family planning there is what we call immediately after delivery some people they want to do what is called lactational family planning Don't, this lactational family planning is when you Hello, can we hear me now? Yes. Hello. Yes. yes, okay. Yes. yes. Earlier, I'm sorry about that disconnection. We were discussing about lactational type of family planning. I said this method, the woman decides to do exclusive breastfeeding. And when she decides to do exclusive breastfeeding, she will not menstruate and she will not get pregnant. But when you begin to add formula to your baby and, you know, keep for time to breastfeed, then it is no longer safe. The person that can use this type of lactational method of family planning is somebody who, who will do exclusive breastfeeding. So please, if you know that it is not possible for you to do exclusive, then you need to use another form of family planning. Then the next one we are going to talk about is the barrier method of family planning. The barrier method is when you, you have to use condom. I'm bringing this forward because Hello. for some reason, some people may not be able to we will not be able to use um, other method of family planning for them for some reason. So if you fall into that category and you cannot use any form of family method immediately, we encourage you to use condom. Maybe um, you cannot, your uterus is bulky and we cannot put, um, if you, maybe you desire to have a cup of tea and we cannot put it, we ask, condom for a while or for any reason they use condom then another method that we also have is some people once their period returns maybe they are catholic I know some people who are Catholic, they want to use um, safe period. For people, they are not Catholic, but they still don't want to swallow tablets. They don't want injection. They don't want implant. Uh, they just want safe period. So if your period is regular, very, uh, 
regular, then we will support you and encourage you and teach you how to use safe period. When you want to use safe period, if your period is, let's say it's 28 chapter, at the end of 28 days, your period will come. Or at the end of 30 days, your period will come. Then we will, then, you will understand how to use it. Let's say, for example, if your period is 28 days circle, after your, after your delivery and your period regularizes, then on the from, before your ovulation is on, for the person that has 28 days circle, your ovulation is on the 14th day. But to place it, you can skip having sex from 12, 13, 14, 15 days. You know, those five days in between, don't have mm -hmm. sex. Then after that, you can have sex to your next period come. That is safe period. If it is fat, then your ovulation time will be on the 15th day from the time of your period. And then if you want to, like I said, to play safe, you can stop having sex from 13, 14, 15, 16 days so that you don't get pregnant any time. And then from the you start having sex in your next period. That is a safe period. And then if you are the type that find it convenient to take pills. We also have oral contraceptives. We have oral contraceptives. Yeah. Oral contraceptives. Sorry, let me see if I can a slide. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to see if I can share the slide. Okay, okay yes. Okay, for those who can use tablets, we have oral contraceptive pills. And these oral contraceptive pills, they can be mini pills and they can be combined pills. These pills, pills of which 21 comes in color white, Seven pills come in color red. That one is tonic, like um, your ferrous. But the, the, two, the 21 white pills, they are the, one, they are the contraceptive pills. They are the contraceptive pills that you have to take. From day one, once you see your period, you start taking the white tablets until 21st day. And then after that, you start taking the red. These pills, the mini pills has just one hormone, can be taken by mothers who are breastfeeding. Then the combined pills has estrogen and progesterone, can be taken by women of all age to prevent pregnancy. When you take these pills, your period will come normally, regularly, the way you used to have it, your period will flow. Then the other one that we can also take is injectable. Injectable is another form of contraceptive that by injection. As you can see on the screen, <laughs> contains the same hormone, estrogen and progesterone. This injection can be taken every two, two months or every three, three months. 
Some people, when they take this injection, they may see their period. Some may not see their period. Some may just be spotting. Three things can happen if you take injection. One, your period may come regularly. Two, or your period, you may come spotting. Maybe you just see your pants, you see stain in your pants, but it will not come. Or you will not have your period at all. So this type of family planning method, usually they recommend it for women who, are, who have genotype excess so that they can conserve their blood. They will not bleed while they are using this. This form of family planning is also safe for mothers who are breastfeeding. So if you take this, your family planning advisor will write the dates you have your first in your injection for you and the time you are going to have the next one so that you don't forget. It is taken every two, two months or every three, three months. Then these contraceptives that are hormonal, said the, either your period comes or you spot or you don't have your period at all. How does this, how do they prevent pregnancy? What the pills, the um, injection, and even the implants, how they prevent pregnancy is one. They alter the lining of the uterus so that no pregnancy can. Two, they alter the cervical mucus. You know, during your ovulation, the discharge that comes is like saline.
Hello. Sorry about that disruption. Hello. Hello. We are here, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Hi. We are here. Yeah. I was discussing about the um, injectable form of contraception. Hello. Now we also talk about the implants. <laughs> discussion please mute yourself then we'll also discuss about the implants implants this is the implant we can see it from the screen the implant is another form of um, contraceptive that you can use. Usually, as you can see, it is placed on your arm at the inner part of it. You can have either one or two. If you have one, it will last for three years. If you have two, it will last for five years. They are all hormonal and they work the same way the same way they prevent pregnancy in injection and in the um, oral contraceptive. And the same way they affect the flow of your period. If you put implants, your period may come regular, you know, the way it used to come, or you may just be spotting. It will not come, you will just be spotting. It will just be telling how I've not gone completely. But there's no problem. Or it may not come at all. For some people, they are okay with it if it's not coming at all. But some people who may be worried, don't be worried. There is no problem about it. That is the way it works. But it also prevents pregnancy like the other injection and the tablets, the way they do. Now, what are the contraindications? Contraindications to taking this type of contraception. If the woman has breast lump, you cannot have it because you never can tell what the lump is. If there is breast cancer, you cannot use this form of contraception. If you have unexplained, undiagnosed vaginal bleeding, you cannot have any of this. If you have deep vein thrombosis, you cannot have this form of contraceptive. And if you have diabetes with vascular, you may not be able to have this type of contraceptive. The implants, contraindication to having implants. Implant is the one you put on your arm. You know, most cases, in most cases, we ask before we put implant, we ask, um, give you any form. If you, if you are pregnant, we will not put it. If, you have, if there is any liver disease, put it. If there is history of cancer, we will not put it too. That is this implant. If you react to any of these ingredients, that is, you know, all the hormones. If you react to any of the hormones, you may not be able to have this form of contraceptive. Now, the other form of contraceptive is copper tea. Copper tea is common. Most women take copper tea. Plants that you can have for three years if you want short contrast time of contraception or you want a medium form of contrast like five years you can have it but with copper tea copper tea can last for 10 years copper tea can last for 10 years you can see the diagram if the only time we may not be able to give you copper tea is if you have fibroid which which would have distorted the normal curvature of your uterus. You know, this cooperative may not be able to sit in it comfortably. If you have heavy bleeding, 
we may not be able to give you. If you react to earrings or neck chain or hand chain, we may not be able to give you. We will always ask you. And then we will also ask if you are pregnant. You, the reason you see some people say, my child came with the copper tea is because they are already pregnant before it was inserted. Some people, it is the fear of get, getting pregnant that really drive them to the hospital, not knowing that they are already pregnant. And the unsuspecting midwife or the doctor, if they did not carry out um, pregnancy tests, will just insert it and the baby, will, the baby will grow and the copper tea will be there with it. So in order to avoid this, what we do, you do family, you do pregnancy test before we put it, or we, are, we give you, if your period has not come, you'll be given some pills to take to cause the dry bleeding. And when you, you call, we ask you to come that very last day of the bleeding, and then the copper tea can be inserted. This copper tea, you can remove it anytime, but if you are done with childbearing, you can put it in place and it can last for 10 years without giving you any problem. And usually, we also don't put copper tea if you have any form of vagina discharge that is abnormal. You will first be treated for that vagina discharge before copper tea can be inserted. Then, the last one we are going to talk, I mean, we also talk about the permanent contraceptive method. Permanent contraceptive method. With this permanent contraceptive method, it is usually an invasive method. After the woman delivers, if a woman has cesarean section, it is easy to do. It will be done immediately. As the baby is coming out, the tubes will be ligated and the woman may not have it again. It is irreversible. It is permanent and it is 100%. Usually it is done when women have their last baby. So, I mean, you know, you don't want to have children again. And then it is not done for younger women. If you are less than 35, your doctor may not do it for you. If you are over 35, you, are, you have children and you have complications or indications that can suggest that this uh, permanent contraception be done for you. It will be done for you. Then male too, can your husband too, if they so wish, they desire, they can also have what we call vasectomy. This is done for men. And when they do it, they, mean they will not be able to impregnate their wives. Then the last one is emergency contraceptive. This emergency contraceptive has been bastardized, misused by women because, you know, they will not come and do proper family planning, use a proper method. They will say they don't want to use, and yet they will be having sex when they are not safe. So when they are not safe and they have sex, quickly they will use this emergency contraceptive pills. What it does, it will just disrupt your period and you will not be able to organize yourself. So it is better to come to your healthcare facilitator. She will get, explain to you all that is suitable for you and that your body can accommodate. And it will save you from the stress of this. Emergency contraceptive really is prescribed for a woman, women that have rape, um, that are raped and they don't want to get pregnant. Within 24 hours after the rape, they will give them this emergency contraceptive. That is really the reason for it. And in case you have unprotected sex, you can have this. Otherwise, it is not a pill that should be used regularly in place of your normal family planning method. So, that brings us to the end of the topic that we have today. Please, if you have any question, 
let's begin to have our question. You can unmute yourself now and let our questions begin to roll in. Hello. You can unmute yourself and begin to ask your questions. Hello, house. Hello, ma. Yes, let's begin to have your questions. We understand the topics that we have today. Yes, ma, but my question is, is there any side effects? So, family planning. Which family planning? Which of the methods? The any any one any any of the family planning. The only side effects to family planning is that you cannot get pregnant when you don't want to get pregnant. Want to okay. And when you want to get pregnant, you can remove it if that lasts for ten years. If you put it and after one year or two years or three years, you say you want to get pregnant, you pull it out and you get pregnant. Okay, ma. The three years, the five years. When you make up your mind that you want to get pregnant, you pull it out and you get pregnant. Thank you, ma. You're welcome. Any other question? Hello, good morning, ma. Hello, good morning. Please, I want to ask, which is the safest method? Like, if you don't want to do the permanent one, just for the meantime, which is the safest method? Any of the methods I highlighted is safe. Any of the methods we talked about, you can, if you, if you are good at taking tablets, you can take the oral contraceptive pills. If you don't, you know, you will not um, comply, then you can take the injectables if you want, if you don't mind the injection. And if you know that you are not comfortable with the injection, you can take the implants. And if you know that you don't want anybody can take the copper tea. Any of those, they are safe. Okay, ma. Thank you very much, ma. You're welcome. Hello, ma. Sorry, ma. Can I ask yes. a question outside today's topic? You said? Can I ask a question outside today's topic, please? Please go ahead. Okay, ma'am. Ma'am, um, I'm kind of concerned about how to know the weight of the baby, as in if you don't want the baby to be too big for easy delivery, I don't know. Is there a way you, to find out the weight of the baby? Yes, yes. There's a way to find out the weight. You know, when you go for your antenatal clinic and you are due for scan, your gynecologist will, uh, your obstetrician will do the scan, and from the scan, sometimes they are able to tell the weight of your baby. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, hello, ma. Good morning, ma. Hello, good morning. Okay, so I just wanted to ask, um, the lactational um, prevention, yes, how yes, effective, how, yeah. So how effective it is, the reason why I'm asking is, I did exclusive breastfeeding and um, just a month after my delivery, I started seeing my period immediately, like just the next month after I delivered. So I just wanted to ask how effective this really is. Thank you. Well, it's, it's very effective if you are, you know, if you eat without interrupting it with the formula, is for some people is very, very effective. But if your period comes immediately, then I will advise you to combine lactational with either barrier method. Hello? Are you listening? Yeah. 
Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, it's very effective. But make sure that and you are breastfeeding on demand. But if you want to double show, you know, you can also add um, uh, a barrier method. Maybe you use a condom, but you know, you must study yourself and see whether your period has regularized. If your period has regularized, you can also combine it with um, a safe period so that the lactation, the safe period, the area method of using condom, everything we make sure we accumulate and you ensure that you cannot get pregnant during those period, that period. Hello, ma. Mm, okay. Hello, ma. Hello. Okay, okay, I have a question. Sorry. Yeah. Can I talk? Okay. Yes. I, talk. Okay. For the imp implants and the injectables. Implants. I don't know. How yes. To, imp implants and the injectable. I don't know how to is it, but I've heard that um, there is always uh, the case of people adding weight because it's hormonal. How true is that? Well. I will say it is true and I will say it is not true. It is true because it's hormonal and the way you eat, you know, your eating habit also affects the way you gain weight. You know, some people during their period, where before, shortly before they have their period, they will just be eating and eating and eating. It's the effect of the hormone. And this hormone we are giving is like that hormone. So some people, they are happy increase and they will eat and gain weight but if you can control your heat eating habits you know portion control time you eat and how you exercise you may not gain serious weight do do you understand yes do you understand? thank you so much i do i do thank okay. you okay. Hello, we are around a question. hello Please I have a question. Okay. For the oral pregnancy uh, contraceptives, I want to ask, how often can one take it within the month? The oral contraceptive? Yes. That's for the, the emergency oral contraceptive. one. The pill. No, the, are you talking of the emergency one? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes. The emergency one, you can only take it when you have when you have unprotected sex or when you have sex when you are not safe. And you can't take it more than once in a month because it is only once you are Okay, ma, thank you. All right. Um hello, ma. Hello. Okay, Hi. so ma my last question is, um, I don't know, I think there is this misinformation or will I say, yeah, I should say misinformation about the hormonal um, hormonal method that um, immediately you take it out. Uh, it's on most times it takes a, a, long, a little while before the woman can get pregnant again. And I think that's why most people are usually scared of this family planning thing. Can you please share more, more light on, on that, ma'am? Yeah, you, you know, three, you know, like I told you that the way your period behaves when you use the injectable and the implant. I told you that either your period comes regularly, if your period comes regularly the way it comes, I'm sure that within one or two months after you remove it or you stop taking the injection, you can get pregnant. But for their period, maybe during while they are taking those um, the the method the injectable implants, the spots instead of having their period, the spots such ones you know their period will first come and regularize before you know they can now get pregnant. I'm sure you understand immediately. They once you stop it, you start ovulating because the way. The, 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 the way the method operates is by stopping ovulation. It prevents ovulation. But once you injection or the implant is removed, you start ovulating. 
And once you start ovulating, you can get pregnant. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes, ma'am. We, we have women who take the, um, the Jardel or the Implanon, and once they are ready to get pregnant, they come, we remove it, and the next time you see them, they are pregnant. Once you start ovulating, you will get pregnant. Okay, thank you. All right. Any other question? Okay, if there's no question, I want to thank all of you. I can see a lot of you on the screen. Thank you for attending this uh, Zoom Antineta class. I want to encourage you to continue to come attend it. You see, when you attend this family plan, I mean, this antenatal class, it will help, it will enlighten you and help you to face pregnancy, labor, child raising, you know, without any problem. You can ask questions. Ask us the question. It is better you ask us than listen to teachers who are not in the field. They can only confuse you rather than uh, um, enlighten you. Um, Thank you, ma everybody. No problem. Please, I just want to ask if, um, I mean, we are allowed to ask, um, I mean, postnatal questions, even in this antenatal class. Yes, class. you can ask. Yes, you can ask. You can ask. Okay, uh, I mean, sorry for it. Sorry to um, bring you back again. I just want to ask. No, um, no, it's all right. Baby... Okay, so when the baby is sitting, um, I mean, when, once the baby starts sitting, what are the signs for, I mean, we mothers to look at? Because, I mean, there's this um, information by mothers that once a child is, I mean, you see that your child tap pooping and they'll tell you it's sitting sometimes. I mean, a lot of symptoms that comes with sitting, we don't know, but yeah. because our mothers have experienced it, they'll tell you, oh, it's part of sitting. And you just, we just take it as, okay, it's part of sitting. I might not really be sitting. So what are those signs to be sitting? Yes. 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 First of all, I want to say that teething ordinarily, especially when you do exclusive breastfeeding, the only sign you see in your baby is your baby will always want to put something in the mouth to like scratch the young, the gum. You see a lot of saliva dribbling from the baby's mouth. And, you know, I wouldn't say fever is part of it, but just in case your baby has fever, you can give paracetamol in case. You know, the eruption of the teeth can give some children fever. But you see, pooing, having to have diarrhea is really not part of it. When your child has diarrhea, please, you need to go to the hospital. Diarrhea, vomiting, this is not too for before you know it, they have lost the fluid in their body. And by the time you get to the hospital, it's difficult to put a line for them. So please, diarrhea is really not a part of teething signs for children. If your child starts to pull, you know, you need to go to the hospital when your child has diarrhea, please. So what you look for, dribbling of saliva, the child wants to put things in the mouth and continue to scratch the gum and, you know, a little fever. Otherwise, nothing to be expected. Do you, especially when you breastfeed, you will just, the child will just, oh, just smile and you see the teeth you, in the mouth. I hope you understand me now. Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, all right. Any Thank other you. question? Please, you can ask your question before we...
Okay. So thank you everybody for attending this Zoom. Hope to see you another fortnight. Mm -hmm. God bless you and bless your family. Thank you, Chief. Amen, ma. Thank you, ma. Thank you, ma. Thank you, ma. Thank you. See you then. Thank you, ma. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>